So welcome to Twin City Startup Week. It's the last day of the conference for 2021. Um, glad glad to be here to talk about what I've been up to the last uh, year since I presented last year on another topic. So my title today is Location, Privacy, and Craft Breweries. A little bit about myself. Um, name is Eric, obviously, as you guys probably have found out. I'm an army of one startup. Uh, and I'm a big Apple nerd. So I got spent this morning going to the Apple store, getting the new device and have yet to set it up and getting ready for the talk today. Back in college, um, whenever Apple started to coin the there's an app for that in the early 2010s, uh, I really did feel like there was an app for that. And then as I continued through my software development, in school as a computer engineer, um, I started to say, you know, there's an app for that. And when there isn't, I'll build one. I did build and release an application targeting, uh, I believe, iOS 6 back in like 2013. And it's now long gone and delisted from the store. Um, but it was a really good experience for me. So I've been doing iOS development for a number of years at this point. And speaking of which, um, last year, I released my first real production application titled Cardioactive. It is a private by design fitness application that uses exclusively Apple's health application to save all the fitness and health data, runs on iPhone and Apple Watch, uses all the fancy latest sensors. So the new barometric pressure sensor from the, the latest Apple Watches. Um, and I kind of I've had this dream of, well, what goes well after a workout, a nice cold craft beer. So to jump into the topics of today, location. Location is really important when you're building applications that are about experiences here and there, visiting places. So what can you do with location? Obviously you can build a map Mapping on mobile devices is fairly straightforward, very common in many applications that present location. Um, one of the things that I'm specifically doing and taking advantage of the developer tools that Apple has provided is using some of the on-device intelligence, which includes geofencing. So basically in my use case, I can walk towards a brewery and my application will notify me that, hey, you're nearby a brewery that you've either favorited or you've put the application in the discovery mode. We'd like to you know, inform you that there's something new nearby you. You can also do beacons. So I've, I've had a couple ideas about how we could place Bluetooth beacons within breweries to have more of a uh, intimate experience where the phone can react to certain things or certain events. And then there's another capability that Apple provides called visit detection. And basically whenever you're dwelling at a place for a little bit of time, your phone will send the software a message saying, hey, you're, you're at this coordinate. Is it important or relevant to you? So I'm also using that to kind of identify when you are showing up nearby a new brewery or a location that would serve your favorite craft beer. More importantly, when you do all these location aware things, you do need to consider user privacy and permission. So it's really important to me to not demand that the user share their location. And I'm only asking for location when it's actually relevant contextually within the application. And I think that's a really important thing for applications these days where you know, why is this application using my location all the time in the background? Why can't I just have it do its one little thing um, and show me the map when I view the map setting? Why is it always doing all the other location events and such? I'll touch a little bit more on this when we get into privacy. Um, it's very specific. Apple's basically telling users when location as example is being used by applications. So it's very important to make sure that you're doing it when appropriate. Building a map. Uh, some recommendations that I have if you're building an iOS application or apps for other Apple products, use the Apple Maps API, the, the developer tools that come out of the box. You don't need to have any data downloaded from the server. No logging or tracking or tracing is happening. 
um, based off of what region you're zooming in on and things like that. It's all native on all the platforms. So you're really going to get a good experience with things loading and you're going to get all the latest and greatest technologies that Apple has. As an example here, if you weren't aware, iOS 15 came out on Monday to the public. I've been running it for several months now. And one of the new features that I was super excited to adopt is this new current location button. Again, we'll touch on it in privacy, but basically if the user has not granted the application to use location within an application, they can, or the developer can then present this new location button that Apple has provided. And when you were to tap on this, you'd be able to get the location for a short period of time. So you can make your application location contextually aware at this point in time. And then the user has the peace of mind that, you know, when I stop using the application, the application will stop using my location because that's the way that it works. And more and more applications are going to start adopting it. So people are just going to come to expect it. Another cool thing uh, is using the map markers that are built in. I, I did not populate all 230 some breweries that exist in Minnesota alone uh, into my, my sample for the presentation. But you can see here just in the Twin Cities, the ones that I did, there's like 57 of them. There's, there's probably closer to 80 within the immediate Twin Cities loop. Um, and then when you zoom in on the right hand side, you can see that the pins will automatically spread out. And I think it's a really good experience when a user is going to jump around on the map and then zoom in on certain places. Maybe they want to go say, hey, what's nearby this one brewery and check out the ones that are in the immediate vicinity. So it's it's nice to see at a high level which are the hot spots of all the the top breweries and, and um, where there's a high density of them because, you know, prior to COVID, fun thing to do with friends is we'd go to one brewery and then we'd pick the next one and just have a night of it. We talked a little bit about the geofencing and region monitoring. Uh, more specifically, how it works and what I'm doing is I, I'm using this to basically make my widgets, among other functionality of my application, smart, where I'm basically doing on-device location operations. It does not leave the phone. It's all calculated on the phone. I have a local graph of all the data, meaning like the taproom locations, brewery locations, and everybody's app that would download it. And then the, when the phone says, hey, there's a new location, or you've entered a region, or you've detected a new visit from the operating system, I just run a local check to say, hey, are there any breweries that are within you know, half mile, quarter mile, whatever the user has set up for a preference. And this widget as one example, so driving around in Maple Grove, uh, if you're familiar, Omni Brewing is one of the breweries in Maple Grove and my widget up, updated and was very evident that, you know, hey, you're nearby. Um, now, granted, it's still a working work in progress. Uh, I plan to have a lot more information show up in the widget, like how many breweries are with within X number of miles, etc. So you can really have fun um, and view that all the time on your home screen. As I mentioned earlier, permissions is a big deal. Uh, so what you should be doing if you're building location applications, especially as well as other apps that use sensitive uh, hardware or capabilities on the devices, such as like camera as an example. If the user has not granted permission, in this case for location, they should still be able to have some functionality of your application. And I, I really do believe that everybody should be doing this for applications that they're developing. And it might not be noticeable here, but at the very bottom, the directions button the left hand side is an example where the user has not granted location permission. So the directions button literally just opens up the Apple Maps app and then the user can use the Apple Maps to do the navigation. And then on the right hand side, I have allowed location permission. And in doing so, I can then also calculate approximate travel time to the brewery that I've selected. And if anybody's familiar with the map, this is actually Surly Brewing. So when necessary, ask for location, but don't do it beforehand. Very contextual 
things are going to make sense to the user. Why am I getting this location prop when I haven't even run the app as an example, or I haven't even signed in? That'd be a poor experience where here, if you were to tap on directions or in the other screen for nearby view the map, you can grant the location permission prompt at that point in time to give the user the opportunity to let your app have location. It's really my intent is to put the user in charge of their data and privacy. And on that note, I'm going to jump into privacy. So a lot of what I've done in development, both in the day job and the startup, is really everything that I deliver has to have privacy in mind or privacy as a requirement. Why does it really matter, you might be asking. So users like myself included, um, sometimes they just won't use an app because they think that it's you know tracking or feeling like they're being surveilled across different applications or websites. So it's it's important that as developers and founders and startups that we we understand and recognize that we do have the power to make change and we can basically decide that, hey, I'm going to build a product that does not rely on tracking um, to solicit ads or recommended news. I, I do feel that uh, without a lot of the tracking and social media platforms that are, we are the product for without those targeted ads and recommended news feeds and such, it's, it's going to be a lot better for society and humanity as a whole. And in some places, um, as a developer or, or part of a startup, you should recognize and understand that privacy is part of the law. There are different regulations in California compared to the rest of the states. And then the EU has a ton of GDPR regulations. So it's, most frequently easiest to develop for the most strict market. So everybody gets privacy because the toughest market is the ones that require it. App tracking transparency is a new feature that was released in iOS 14.5. It was long delayed. It was announced summer of 2019, uh, 2020. And then it finally came out after several revisions halfway, um, through the year after it, the iOS 14 had come out. What does this do? It's really bringing awareness to consumers about which applications are quote unquote tracking you. There's a bunch of qualifiers that Apple has laid out and what's considered tracking. Basically in this case, it's the um, for, for advertising. And then there's a handful of other research about it, like how effective it's been and I was looking for some latest information and there's this analytics service provider called Flurry and on their documentation, they have said that 96% of users are electing to disallow applications from tracking. So a user would be selecting the ask the app not to track and I, I've got it turned off on my phone. I, I feel that an application should work without me allowing them to track me across you know web activity, application usage, um, access to, to photos and, and all that kind of stuff. So the app tracking transparency is, is really just the beginning. Um, Apple is, has been and is continuing to do more in the privacy front. Here are a couple of those items. You might have also noticed that a lot of applications were getting an app privacy label with iOS 14, and it went into effect for developers in December of last year. And it was really surprising to see how companies large and small adopted to this new requirement that Apple had put down. Uh, for my personal application, Cardioactive, I had it submitted the day that they announced it and said it's a developer requirement. And basically I, the only data that that application collects is crash data and the user when they consent to the terms of service and privacy policy. So my app privacy label is very limited in, in what I'm actually transmitting off the device. And that's intentional. Um, there, there are other applications that have every single piece of information listed. And it's really unfortunate uh, that they're stuck in that way. The new item that I mentioned earlier, app privacy report, a new feature of iOS 15. Users can now see which applications are using what kind of data um, items that are sensitive to the operating system. So this architecture outlook, as an example, has been accessing location and photos. So this is relevant to my brewery location aware application that I need to understand and make sure that I'm not accessing data when I shouldn't be or when the user's not interacting with the application. 
And then it also does things like what different websites the application is reaching out and communicating to. And based on how I'm building my application, it's pretty much everything is using iCloud. I'll get on that on the next page. Um, but I, I do make sure that I lock down where my application communi communicates with and don't use things like third-party advertising platforms. So some strategies you can take, um, access the data that's minimally required for delivering some feature, ask for permission only when absolutely needed. As I mentioned earlier, if the user doesn't give you the permission, don't punish them, make the app still work. When you can, do things on device. I'm doing all that everything I can for my brewery and location comparison, strip out personal identifiable information and personal health information from anything like metrics, performance, analytic data, logging, really put the user in control and let them opt into sharing if they want to share that data. What am I doing? I am building solutions that are just for Apple platforms so that I don't need to build a cross ecosystem backend to support, for example, Android or desktop for Windows. I am depending on platform software libraries that Apple has written and then ones that I write myself so that I'm not gaining any uh, vulnerabilities or libraries that may be doing things that I don't know or understand or that they don't advertise. Using things like iCloud as a means to sign in, I'm using Apple to basically provide an identity to the user. So I don't need to have a sign in. I don't need to have username or passwords, which is really helping me defend uh, my myself building the application to make sure that the users don't share that information because frankly they they're already signed into the phone for iCloud and such for iMessage and photos and things like that so take advantage of that and then I'm building every feature with privacy as basically a requirement how does this feature work with privacy applied to it many of you might think that I'm making sacrifices and that and that may be true in terms of monetary gain for I'm not doing advertising, so I'm not getting you know views of things like that. But I really believe that the user should come first. So I'm not putting in any advertisement frameworks, no third party crash diagnostics. Logging is done in a privacy way. And I very heavily use TestFlight, which is Apple's testing beta platform. If a user wanted to you know share additional information, they'd get a special build that they can then transmit that data to me. Here's a couple examples. Um, first one is my metric collection, the user can opt in. Second one is my permission screen for my workout app. The third one, um, I am using Apple's health platform. So all the health and data, health and fitness data stays on the device, on the phone, does not leave. Um, the third slide is from my new application, the craft experience. And I'm, I have enabled both visit monitoring and the region discovery. And here we can see that I am requesting to upgrade the permission. And if you're familiar with iOS 14 last year, they introduced the concept of, would you like to give the developer of the application your precise location or your general region? So a user could say, hey, I don't want them to know that I am at Nicollet Mall in Minneapolis. I just want them to know that I'm in Minneapolis. But for some of the application features, like the ones that I've enabled, they do require a more precise location triangulation. So I very gracefully say, hey, if you want to use these things, you need to upgrade your permission. And then things like, again, using iCloud as an identity. So my iCloud profile can tell me what my name is. And for other users, if they opt into sharing their iCloud information, you can then view um, on the right hand, the most right side screen, you can then view different people that are on the platform or on the application based off of how a couple of the iCloud features work. You can basically search um, whomever's in your contact list and Apple will say, hey, this user is using this app. And you say, great, because then I don't need to do anything with accessing the contacts. It's all done for me by the operating system. Finally, let's get into the craft experience itself, the craft breweries part of the presentation today. So. What features have I announced so far? I've been a little bit public on this on LinkedIn, as well as I have a meetup group and just kind of sharing with folks that I know I'm getting ready for a public beta. But in the first version, I've had a brewery listing. As I mentioned earlier, there's like 300, uh, close to 300 different breweries 
in the metro and in the state. So I'm working on getting all that data in there. Tap room details, amenities, et cetera, is on the roadmap. Breweries, not only that, but also the brews that they have. And as a craft beer maker myself, I always go and ask, what are the beer facts? So I'm really excited to be able to share that for like-minded individuals that want to know what kind of hops, grains, or malts are in a specific beer because those are the things that I want to know. And then the nearby, as we had kind of shown on one of the earlier screens where it's the map and you can zoom in and see what's nearby. And that all uses the on-device location intelligence that I'm building out. Some coming soon features, building an event calendar. One of the things that I'm trying to target is the ability to basically say, hey, I don't want to go visit this mobile website because every brewery application or brewery website has a different layout. Nothing is consistent. Half the time, they don't even load well on a mobile phone. You know, it's a small screen factor. So I'm trying to build a common place and a common look and feel that everybody can go a one-stop shop to see all the events that are happening at breweries. And then there's a social aspect too. I've not built out a lot of that because that gets into the market of sharing data. And again, building everything with privacy in mind, that'll take a little bit of time. I've always wanted to have a food truck searching capability. So I plan to have that in here at one point in time, along with things like, you know, does the brewery have a diner or is it walking distance to have somebody deliver some food, etc. And then sharing. I do want to have users be able to share links to breweries, links to beers, etc. This is an item that I haven't really announced until today. Um, so if anybody's familiar with the icon on the right hand side, this is an app clip which was announced and introduced in iOS 14 last year, basically through like a text link, um, Siri, a number of other things. You can have this little pop-up happen on your phone and you can interact with it. In this case, view, this is for my fitness application. I'm gonna be doing something like this for breweries and I actually talked with Apple at their developer conference this, this summer and they were super thrilled so much that I actually got the engineering manager's direct email and he's like, this is a great idea. I'd love to help you. So as I build this out, I'm going to be sure to stay in touch with them and hopefully wow the audience, wow everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. More details on that coming in the future. And it's all location aware and it does it all on device. I jump a little bit into my beta and pilot and I think we got only a few minutes left. So where are we today? Where am I in development? As I mentioned, iOS 15 just came out. I was waiting for that to happen because I want to use some of the new features. Again, I, I build things that are latest and greatest and all the Apple technologies. So I'm really striving to adopt all these cool advanced features that the operating systems continue to evolve and provide me. I will be doing a preview of the application in October along with a public beta in November and December. And hopefully I will release in January. I don't have the application up for pre-order yet, but if you join my meetup group, I'll put all the details in there. Or if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, that's another place you can get some details. And then for maintaining this application, as I mentioned, all these breweries, all these details, I'm going to need some way to get that data in there. So I'll actually be building a brewery manager app that if you're part of a brewery or you know somebody that works at a brewery or is associated, they'd be able to use this application, put icons for their beers, any um, new content, new listings, new taproom updates, etc. And then to go full circle on the whole um, idea of a taproom experience, I will be making an Apple TV taproom app as well. That's a little bit further out. Um, but the cool thing about, you know, developing for the Apple ecosystem is that you can write code once and deploy it to several products. So I'm, I'm hoping that these things all kind of happen at the same time, but we will see. So how to get in touch, how to get the beta. You can send me an email at craft at beta twin cities app dot dev, or if you are a brewery or you know somebody and you want them to be part of this as a pilot. Um, feel free to have them reach out to me directly at my support email and then meet up if you want details. If you want beta links to check out the app early, feel free to join my meetup group. Just search Craft Experience Twin Cities on the meetup app and you can join. Again, 
privacy matters. Um, everything that I do is considering privacy at the, the topmost requirement. So what do I do? I, I build apps that are private by design. 